It's that time of year again, when the sales start to pop up everywhere. It's when I'm the most tempted to look for the best deals. I mean, can you blame me? I'm constantly getting reminded in my mailbox, in my inbox, and it becomes way too easy to reason out why I need to buy my 10th coffee mug or that cute wicker basket. The old me would have caved, but now I know that I don't have room in my home, in my life, for those things anymore. In fact, instead of shopping, I decided I wanted to make it a ritual to declutter during this time of year. What better time than now to edit our lives and decide what we will bring with us into the new year? During my huge decluttering session last year, I probably got rid of half of my stuff. But even so, I still feel like I run into things that have no place in my life anymore. I learned that no matter how much I edit, I can never do it all at once because our lives change and we change. Now that the bulk of my things are gone, it's time to go over it with a fine tooth comb. Here is how and what I'm mindfully decluttering this year. I hope that you guys will join me in the process as well. Okay, let's get started. I'm starting with my living room first because it will probably be the easiest for me. My living room is one big open space and we deliberately chose to have everything out in the open so we can see and enjoy all of our favorite things. Since we don't have a TV, I wanted books and music to be our main entertainment, but over time, it was pretty clear which books and vinyls I read and listened to over and over again and which ones were just there collecting dust. The ones that remain on the bookshelves are philosophy books from my college days and have more sentimental value than anything else. It's not like I don't have space for them anymore, but I'm just not getting the same value out of them. So what's the point of keeping them around? When letting go of items, it really helps me to think that others could be enjoying and getting value out of this just like I once did. It makes the letting go process just a little bit easier for me. The kitchen is our most used room in the house, and it's probably the most cluttered space as well. There are kitchen tools I no longer use, measuring spoons that never get used, and borrowed Tupperwares that never found its way home. Since it can start to feel overwhelming, I like to only dedicate about 30 minutes or an hour if I have the time to just get rid of as much as possible within that time. Setting the timer really helps me to go through each item pretty quickly, instead of going down the memory lane or contemplating on each item for too long. This is the chance to open up all the cabinets, all the drawers, clean all the surfaces, and organize everything as you put them back. Ask yourself, when was the last time I used this? I think a good rule of thumb is, if you haven't touched it in six months, you probably won't be needing it anytime soon. Ideally, we only keep products we use on a daily basis in our bathrooms, but we can't get rid of the medicine, toiletries, or cleaning supplies that we do need from time to time. So I think a good place to start decluttering in the bathroom is by first looking for duplicates. I notice that I have so many of the same soaps, lotions, hair accessories, and face masks, when I only really need one of each. This rule doesn't just apply to my bathroom products, but also for my makeup as well. I mean, how many of the same brownish pink lipsticks do I really need? Out of all the skin tints, powders, makeup brushes, is there one that I reach for the most? I have certain products or brands that I love, so when I'm not careful, I will always buy duplicates without noticing it. So once I minimize, I'm actually planning to keep an inventory of all the things that I have, and of course, 
be more mindful of what I bring into my home moving forward. Most of my life, I dress for my fantasy self. The problem is, I have more than just one. Fantasy self is described as an idealized image of who we want to be. And while this can be a fun way to experiment with style, it can also lead us to buying way too many clothes that are out of touch with our own reality. When I'm going through my clothes, I try to picture what my day-to-day -day actually looks like. I work from home, walk the dogs, exercise, go to family gatherings, and occasionally go out for lunch and dinner. This requires mostly trustworthy basics that I can mix and match, comfortable active wear, and a couple of going out outfits that I won't get tired of. Oh, and a few winter items for when I travel or visit my parents. Some of you guys know I wanted to build a capsule wardrobe that truly reflected my personal style and my lifestyle. I feel like I am slowly getting there. If you haven't seen my capsule wardrobe video already, I'll leave it in the description box below. What is your most treasured item? Mine is probably this Jasmine music box from a Disney store in Paris. Every time I listen to the melody, it takes me back to that hot summer day roaming around the city with my mom, dad, and my sister. It's now old and faded, but my love for it will always stay the same. There are things I'm willing to let go of, like things I've outgrown, but then there are things I will always keep, even if it takes up space. The biggest mistake I made when I first started decluttering was getting rid of too many sentimental items that now I cannot get back. Yes, it's good to minimize. And of course, I can take a picture of it and keep it digitally, but it won't be the same feeling as holding it in my hand and taking that moment to relive a little moment of my past. I don't attach too much meaning to physical things, but I also know that I don't want to live my life completely bare and sterile. This is why decluttering is not just an act of getting rid of things, but it's actually about finding the right balance, getting to know ourselves in the process. We have to decide what brings value to our lives and what doesn't anymore. And I think it's challenging because nobody else other than ourselves can tell us this. I think for most of us, we can look into our homes during the holiday season, find that we already have everything we need. You never know, you might find that it's time to pass along the thing that you love to the person that you love, which can be the greatest gift to the both of you. Until next Tuesday, take care guys, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.